The trunk of the horror was lifted and quested about. The topaz eyes stared unseeingly, and Conan knew the monster was blind. With the thought came a thawing of his frozen nerves, and he began to back silently toward the door. But the creature heard. The sensitive trunk stretched toward him, and Conan's horror froze him again when the being spoke in a strange, stammering voice that never changed its key or timber. The Sumerian knew that those jaws were never built or intended for human speech. Who is here? Have you come to torture me again, Yara? Will you never be done? O oh, Yag Kosha, is there no end to agony? Tears rolled from the sightless eyes, and Conan's gaze strayed to the limbs stretched on the marble couch. And he knew the monster would not rise to attack him. He knew the marks of the rack and the searing brand of the flame. And tough-souled as he was, he stood aghast at the ruined deformities which his reason told him had once been limbs as comely as his own. And suddenly, all fear and repulsion went from him to be replaced by a great pity. What this monster was, Conan could not know, but the evidences of its sufferings were so terrible and pathetic that a strange aching sadness came over the Sumerian. He knew not why. He only felt that he was looking upon a cosmic tragedy, and he shrank with shame as if the guilt of a whole race were laid upon him. That, my friends, is from the Tower of the Elephant, which you can find in this magnificent book. Yes, my friends, it's time once again for the Robert E. Howard Show. So hello, my friends, hello, and welcome once again to Stately Vaughn Manor and the Robert E. Howard Show, where we're, we are going to talk about one of the greatest Conan stories of all, The Tower of the Elephant by Robert E. Howard. So The Tower of the Elephant was originally published in Weird Tales in March of 1933. It tells the story of a very young Conan in one of his first experiences in civilization. He's very new to civilization in this story. So... We've seen Conan at this point as a king. We've seen him as a young man a little bit older than this, but this is a very young Conan, very green to the ways of civilization. And the adventure that he has as a young thief, this takes place in a city that is unnamed in the text. And... He is a thief at this point in his career. Like I said, very new to civilization. And so he's very, he's very uh, kind of confused by the ways of civilized people. And he's trying to get accustomed to them. And he's in a tavern because, you know, Conan hangs out at taverns at the beginning of this story. And he hears this guy bragging about stuff. And this guy mentions the Tower of the Elephant. Now, the Tower of the Elephant is a tower in the city, a mysterious tower where a wizard lives, a sorcerer named Yara. Yara the sorcerer lives in this tower, and inside this tower is said to be a great jewel. A great jewel is in the Tower of the Elephant. And... This guy mentions this, and Conan asks him, Hey, how come no one's stolen this thing? And the guy is a real jerk to Conan, and he's rude to him. And he says, Ah, what do you know, dumb kid? And Conan, you don't know anything. You, you can never get in there. And Conan's like, Well, why not? You know, if, if you're tough enough and courageous enough, you should be able to get in there to that tower and steal that jewel, the heart of the elephant. And this is the point where there is this great line. 
kind of an immortal line from Robert E. Howard, where this guy is being rude to him. And the line is this, civilized men are more discourteous than savages because they know they can be impolite without having their skulls split as a general thing. And Conan ends up getting into trouble here and killing this guy. But after he kills him, he goes off to the Tower of the Elephant because he's determined to steal this jewel, the heart of the elephant. So as I was thinking about talking about this story, I was wondering how much of the plot I should reveal. So I'm not going to reveal a heck of a lot, but I do want to talk about this story because it is. It's a magnificent story. Just a beautifully written story, which you can kind of see just from that little bit that I read you. So Conan, he's on his way to the Tower of the Elephant. He scales the walls, he gets into the grounds, and he runs into this guy named Taurus. Taurus, the Prince of Thieves. Taurus is an interesting character. Now, they are, they just, they figure out right away that they're both here for the same thing. They are both there to steal the heart of the elephant. Taurus, who is a w very well-known thief, and Conan, who at this point is not well-known at all. He's just a fresh young kid who's just decided to do this on impulse. Whereas Taurus, he's been thinking about this for a long time. He's been planning this out meticulously. And he thinks, you know what, to avoid trouble, why don't we just go about and do this together? We'll share this adventure. And so Conan's like, yeah, okay. Taurus is really interesting. And I kind of feel like just from the glimpse that we get of him in this story, The Tower of the Elephant, that he would make an interesting character in his own right. He could, there could have been a series of stories about this guy, I think, because he, he sounded kind of cool. But his appearance in this story is brief. I won't tell you how it all goes down, but it is a brief appearance. But Taurus is an interesting character. And it kind of demonstrates in this story how quickly Robert E. Howard can put together a really interesting character. He can do it within paragraphs, which is important. It's one of the reasons Robert E. Howard was such a great pulp writer. He's able to propel the plot along, I mean, at a rocket's pace when he needs to, but he is able to put interesting characters into his stories when he does not have a lot of room to do so. And he does that with this character. As with another character we meet very, very shortly, Conan gets into this tower. They scale the tower, Taurus and Conan, to the top of the tower, which is the only place they can get in. Once he's inside, Conan has a great battle with a giant spider. You know, Nothing makes a pulp story better than a fight with a giant spider. So he has a fight with a giant spider, Conan does, and it's awesome. So after he has this fight with the giant spider, which is great, that is when he goes into a chamber and he sees what he believes is a statue. It has the head of an what looks like an elephant or what has been... He, Conan's never seen an elephant, but he's heard about him. And so when he sees, sees the Ag Kosha, he, he believes that he has what would be the head of an elephant. However, you kind of get the idea, the way Howard writes it, that maybe he doesn't look a, completely like an elephant, but that's the closest thing. And since Conan has never seen an elephant, he just thinks this guy has the head of an elephant, when actually it was probably weirder than that. Yag Kosha's head, and the body of a human. He basically has a humanoid body. But Conan finds out right away that this is not a statue. It's a living creature who is chained to this seat. He's chained up here. And that is the part where I read, which is Conan's first meeting with this creature. And this creature tells Conan his story where this creature actually was from a race from beyond the stars. And thousands of years ago, they filtered down to the earth. They flew down. They used to have wings. And they flew down to the earth. 
And slowly over, the, over time, Yog Kosha's people, they live a long time. They slowly died out one by one until Yog Kosha was the only one left of his race. And he comes in contact with people who worship Yog Kosha as a god. And eventually, Yog Kosha meets the sorcerer, Yara. And Yara, over time, betrays Yog Kosha and chains him up and uses him for his magic. And so when Conan comes and shows up to steal the heart of the elephant, Yog Kosha feels like this was meant to happen. And he asks Conan for a favor. And Conan grants it. Now, what is that favor? You have to read the story to find out. Great ending to this story. I kind of want to talk about it, but I won't because I really don't want to mess up your first experience of reading this story. This story is in the public domain. You don't have to have this book to read it. You can find it online and read it there if you'd like. But some interesting things about this story. First of all, it is great. This is a wonderful story. And the writing is beautiful. I mean, it is just top-notch. Robert E. Howard writing at the top of his game. It's great. So this is one of those stories where Robert E. Howard pulls you right in and you just, you're just along. You're just along for the ride, experiencing the story. It's one of those stories. It's interesting because it shows Conan very, very young, new to civilization. He's a tough kid this guy, but he's also got a heart. And that brings us to the other interesting thing about this story. So we know that H.P. Lovecraft and Robert E. Howard were friends. They never met each other, but they wrote letter after letter after letter to each other. And Robert E. Howard was influenced by H.P. Uh, Lovecraft's writings. So what we have in this story is a being which is very much like something that you would see in H.P. Lovecraft's Cthulhu Mythos. Yog Kosha could be a creature from a Lovecraft story with a big difference. In this story, the being that has come down from the stars, this ancient creature who has lived for centuries, is sympathetic. He's a, symp a very sympathetic character. You sympathize with him. You feel for him, just as Conan did. You will feel the same. He's not a terrifying being. He seems wise. He's a wise creature. He is not evil at all. He's, he, he doesn't look down on humanity. The evil is not from the creature from the stars. The evil comes from a human being, Yara, the evil wizard. So the evil in this story is not the creature from the stars. It's Yara, a person, which is an interesting take, very different from what Lovecraft undoubtedly would do with this story. He would make Yakosha unspeakable and horrifying and <laughs> it would be a whole nother thing, trust me. Robert E. Howard goes another way with this, and it works beautifully in this story. So good. This story is justifiably famous as a Conan story. One of Robert E. Howard's best stories, Conan or otherwise. It's one of Robert E. Howard's best. It has been adapted in comic books, at least three times, maybe four now, but at least three times. It was done twice by Marvel Comics and once by Dark Horse. All three of those versions were really good. The best one, I believe, was the first one uh, that came out in the Conan the Barbarian color comic book by Roy Thomas and Barry Windsor Smith as the artist. That comic book was probably... That probably was one of the best single comic book stories from the 1970s. It was kind of a masterpiece of a comic book story. It was wonderful. Absolutely great story. They got a lot right from this story. 
The other two versions were really good too. Uh, the Dark Horse was pretty good. And like I said, they might have done it one more time by this point. Who knows? But those are the three I know about. It also was adapted on the, car on the Conan cartoon. There was a Conan cartoon. Don't watch it. It was, this was, there was a version of this on the Conan cartoon and you don't, I know you think you want to see it, but you don't trust me. <laughs> you don't want to see it, but it, this is brilliant. I probably talked too much about it. You should just go read the story because it's amazing. Um, so next week, uh, I will be talking about something else. I'm going to be talking about Robert E. Howard, the greatest pulp writer of all time, but why? Why is Robert E. Howard the greatest pulp writer of all time? I'll be talking to you about that next time. And then it's right back to Conan when we're going to be talking about the next Conan story. Now, Conan, we're going into the Conan's future again to back when Conan was a king of Aquilonia. And we're going to be talking about the Scarlet Citadel. The Scarlet Citadel will be the next Conan story we talk about. Okay, guys, you... Have a great day.